Hello there and welcome to the World Today on Channels Television. I'm Cynthia Are. Here are our top stories making rounds around the world. France has confirmed that a second Frenchman features in a video showing the beheading of Syrian prisoners and the body of a U.S. hostage killed by the Islamic State. French media quote sources as saying he is a 22-year-old from an eastern suburb of Paris. Earlier on, the government named Maxime Huchard from Normandy as a militant in the video released at the weekend. About a thousand French jihadists are thought to have gone to Syria and Iraq. French broadcaster France 2 said that Mr. Dos Santos had also been identified by a friend who said the man had surprised his family when he suddenly converted to Islam. However, officials had not established the exact role of the two militants. He called for the families to be given more information about the danger of jihadist websites and urged families to be vigilant in stopping young people from being recruited by extremists. Now, a Pakistani court has given the death sentence to four people who bludgeoned to death a pregnant relative who married against their consent. 30-year-old Farzana Parveen was beaten with bricks and sticks in May outside Lahore's High Court. Police denied charges they stood by as it happened. Ms. Parveen's father, brother, cousin and former fiancé were all found guilty today. Another brother got 10 years behind prison. Now the whole family has gathered at the High Court in May to hear a case of Ms. Parveen's relatives that was filed against her new husband, Iqbal, accusing him of abducting her. The newlyweds were at Lahore's court to contest this case. Ms. Parveen had already testified to police that she'd married of her own free will. According to the police, a scuffle took place between about 20 members of Ms. Parveen's family and 10 to 15 of Iqbal's, during which she was struck with a brick three times and wounded fatally. Police say that Ms. Parveen had died by the time of officers were able to intervene in the so-called honor killing. Crisis continues in the Middle East and the latest reports say Israeli troops have destroyed the home of a Palestinian man who killed a woman and a baby by ramming a car into a Jerusalem tram stop last month. The demolition came hours after Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed to win a battle for Jerusalem following a deadly attack on a synagogue. Tuesday, synagogue attack left four rabbis and a police officer dead. Israel boosted security across the city, setting up random roadblocks in and around Jerusalem's old city after the deadly synagogue attack, the most recent in a series of violent incidents in Jerusalem. Police stood guard as a few dozen worshippers prayed in the synagogue where the shooting broke out on Tuesday. We're staying here. We're not moving anywhere. We're going to have to move on with our life. I came from New York seven years ago to live in Israel. I gave out everything I had in America. I came here. This terrorist attack is not going to change anything. We're going to continue with our life. Meanwhile, Jerusalem Mayor Ni Baraka has vowed a harsh fight against the Palestinian attack that left four Israelis killed and eight others wounded at the synagogue. The attack during morning prayers in the West Jerusalem neighborhood was carried out by two Palestinian cousins wielding axes, knives and pistols. They were shot to death by police after the deadliest assault in the Holy City in six years. In one of Israel's first acts of retaliation, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu ordered the demolition of the East Jerusalem homes of the attackers and the apprehension of a dozen of their relatives. Netanyahu blamed Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas for inciting the events and vowed to deliver a heavy-handed response to the bloodshed. Abbas also condemned the attack, the first time he has done so in the wave of deadly violence against Israelis, but he also called for an end to Israeli provocations surrounding Jerusalem's shrines that are sacred to both Jews and Muslims. 
Well, we'll take a break now on the world today. When we come back, a blast in Iraq leaves at least four people dead. We'll have details for you shortly. Please stay with us. Welcome back. We're still watching the world today on channels television. Now at least four people have died in Iraq after a suicide car bomber struck in the Kurdish capital, Erbil. The blast accompanied by gunfire was reported outside of the governor's office close to the historic citadel in the city center. A car bomb exploded in the center of the Iraqi Kurdish capital, Abil, on Wednesday, killing several people. Footage from the scene showed several charred vehicles and what appeared to be a blood stain on the cobbles outside the governor's office. A witness said at least two police and two civilians had been killed. Islamic State militants who overran swords of northern Iraq this summer have repeatedly threatened to launch a attacks against Kurdistan, but the region has so far largely managed to insulate itself from the violence. The last major attack in Abil was more than one year ago, when militants launched a coordinated suicide and car bomb attack on the headquarters of the security services. Another blast took place in August, but there were no casualties. Now we move on to other stories, to some politics right now. Um, Lieutenant Colonel, Z uh, I beg your pardon, before that story, we have to take this one. In the meantime, U.S. President Barack Obama says there is no alliance with the Syrian President Bashar al-Assad in the fight against the Islamic State militants. But as the VOA state correspondent Scott Stern reports, some Syrian rebels say U.S.-led airstrikes are helping the government in Damascus. Since the start of U.S.-led airstrikes against Islamic State militants, Syrian government troops have pulled back in their fight against the group. But President Obama says that's not the result of any alliance with President Assad in combating those fighters, who are also known as ISIL. We have communicated to the Syrian regime that when we operate uh, going after ISIL uh, in their airspace, that uh, they will be well advised not to uh, take us on. But beyond that, uh, there's no expectation that uh, we are going to, in some ways, enter an alliance with Assad. Uh, he is not credible in that country. Moderate Syrian rebels, with whom the Obama administration is hoping to fight the Islamic State, say airstrikes allow Syrian forces time to attack them, and have turned some 